Well, hello and welcome to episode two of the brand new Beyond the 80 podcast brought to you by Neds. Uh, it's definitely a bit of an unusual time for everyone in the world right now and rugby league. So we're here to keep you up to date with all that's happening and hopefully have a bit of fun along the way. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Talentai. Each episode uh, will, of course, be joined by a special guest right across the game of rugby league. Uh, fortunate to be joined by uh, one of the good guys in the NRL and a great player in his own right. Josh Reynolds, thank you for joining the podcast today. Hey, mate. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well, mate. Obviously, uh, an audio format on the podcast. I just want to, if you can, just paint us a little picture of uh, how's uh, social distancing and isolation going for you. What's your What's your home set up like at the moment? Yeah, well, so far, I've obviously been waiting for the call from you because I heard this is one of the biggest podcasts going around at the moment. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, so bear with me. Uh, but no, nah, mate, uh, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's boring as that sh- <laughs> funnily enough. <laughs> No, just, mate, I just, um, obviously, you've just got to keep training and stuff by yourself. And, you know, I've been doing some cooking and, and stuff like that. But I think having um, ADHD and uh, isolation, they don't go well together. No, so, you, are, um, you are one of the more people persons, you know, you need that kind of interaction, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> oh, mate, I need something. I, need, I look out the window sometimes away to my neighbours and, they're off me for, for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a testing time for everyone. You know, we're having a laugh here, but it is, it is very serious. And some people are you now affected more than others. But, um, you know, I think Australia, like us as a country, are finally getting it. You know, I think as you know, people finally going into isolation. And I think because the sooner we, we do that, the, I suppose, better it's going to be and, and the faster we can get back to normality. Absolutely, mate. What's the chat been like amongst the boys? Have you had much interaction with them over WhatsApp or whatever throughout this time? Or yeah, so mate, obviously uh, with all our, um, you know, one of the main things that's you know, hasn't sort of been um, hidden is our, you know, our pay and whatsoever. And you know, we've got guys, or well, we've got a guy who's been pretty much doing it all for the whole NRL in Russ Tucker, who's done an amazing job for us, mate. I honestly don't know what we would have done without him. You know, you, you don't realise how how smart he is and, and what he's done for, for the whole playing group. And, you know, I, I think the whole playing group should be forever grateful because, you know, at the start there, it was, it was you know, pretty bad. And, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's still not, you know, where, you know, everyone would want it to be, but it's, 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 it's what it is what it is. You know, there's, it's still, the world is, is hurting and, you know, where, you know, don't get me wrong, we play sport and we love what we do, but we're no better than anyone else. You know, there's, there's people losing jobs left, right and centre. And, you know, we definitely do understand that. And you'd be pretty heartless, I suppose, not to. So it is it is tough times. But as a playing group, mate, we've, we've got blokes like, I suppose, Ronnie, Ronnie Palmer, who's been ringing us every now and then to make sure we're all cheered up, the Cougar and things like that. And, you know, we're all pretty, we're hurting for, all, you know, all the, all the Tiger staff that, you know, did get put off yesterday because, I suppose everyone, it's all a, you know, we're all a big family, I suppose, and it does hurt when you know, a lot of people do get put off and aren't going to, you know, be able to come back. Hopefully they can come back when it all, you know, comes back to normal. Absolutely, mate. Well, thank you again for joining us today on the Beyond the 80 podcast. Thank you to Neds for sponsoring uh, each and every episode. Uh, at the moment, we've got a bit of a fun show lined up today, mate. Nothing kind of too, too serious. We'll just touch on a little bit of news and then we'll get you into a couple of little fun segments test your knowledge against a few of the other boys right after this. That's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Thank you for joining us again on the Beyond the 80 podcast here with our special guest in Josh Reynolds. Josh, obviously plenty of news and updates floating around the moment as a result of the coronavirus. Obviously, you gave a bit of an update before in regards to the pay. Just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on two bits of news that were floating around today. Um, Potentially, this idea that the NRL Grand Final could kind of be split into a bit of a three-game series across Sydney, Brisbane, and Townsville. Now, you're a, you're obviously a proud New South Welshman, and we'll get into some of your origin stuff and your well, we'll call it a hatred for Queensland, mate. Would you have, you wouldn't have a problem with the Grand Final moving at all, would you? Ah, uh, no, nah, not not in the circumstances, mate. I think whatever we can do to, I suppose, grow the game back to where it needs to be um, is a good thing. You know, I, I know it's always the grand final's always played in, in Sydney, and I think that's you know the best state for it to have it in. But then again, if it's gonna, must be I suppose create some um, you know some money for the game, and 
and get it, like I said, get it back to where it needs to be. I sort of think it's it's a pretty good thing, to be honest. So not too sure if it will happen. But, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. A grand final at all, I guess, is better than, than nothing, right? <laughs> yeah, totally, mate, 100%. Any 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 type of footy or, or whatsoever would, would be good because, you know, I'm honest, I think a lot of you know, us as players and, and the fans are probably are realising some things that we do take for granted, you know, like you've got people in the country who can only probably watch one or two games a year when we go out there. And I think everyone, all the fans are feeling that now a bit, you know, like they don't get it for any game. So I think a bit of perspective is, is being thrown into, into it all as well. So when it does come back, I think we should all be grateful whether, you know, fan, player, worker, that you know, we, we do have it pretty lucky. Absolutely, mate. And you speak about perspective, I guess you probably want to get your, your take on one other good bit of news, I guess, around today, which is around the, the women's competition. I think the RLPA confirming they're going to try and work with those top 20 Gillaroos and that sort of thing around their funding, I guess, with their season in a bit of jeopardy. That kind of, it, it seems like a good thing the RLPA and the NRL are doing all they can to get you know, both the, the men and the women kind of back on the field as soon as they can. Yeah, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more, mate. I think... Um... You know, they've done great in, in growing the, you know, the women's side of the game. And, you know, they've brought some sponsors on uh, that, you know, probably weren't there if, before the women come in. And, you know, they brought a, a really good brand of footy. And, you know, everyone seems to be excited. It's pretty cool. Like, as you, you walk around now and you see little girls looking up to want to be those you know, those women playing that sport. So, I think, it yeah, it is a good, um, I suppose, incentive that they have given those girls because they've worked hard, I suppose, to to get to where they are as well. So it's um, it's good that they're uh, trying to look after everyone and I suppose cover the game in all in all areas. Well, that pretty much sums up everything you need to know in the news right now. Uh, up next, we'll kick it off with our first segment with a little game called You're the Coach. And that's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Thank you for joining us again today on the Beyond the 80 podcast. We're into our first game for today called You're the Coach. Uh, Josh, we played this with uh, Chris Lawrence and Chris McQueen in episode one. And I'm not going to lie, they set the bar pretty high. And uh, you're flying flying solo today. So we just kind of need you to, you know, this is a really big game here. We really need you to step up here. Um, Oh, wow. Just before we begin, mate, is there any interest in coaching for you? Is that, like, yeah. How would you go as a coach? Um, 100% no. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'd be a good. Um, I think I'd be a good assistant coach because I, I I can definitely. Uh, I suppose I, don't, I I enjoy the game and whatsoever, but yeah, I, I definitely you know I still like being a part of the boys and you know I think when you take that step to being the next the a head coach, don't get me wrong, they're still you know a, a part of the crew, but you know you got to make the the tough decisions and sometimes I'm not a big fan of making them. Yeah, I could see you as a good little Ronnie Palmer figure as well, Josh. I think you've got yeah, that yeah, as well. yeah. I wish I had a, I wish I had a rig like him, to be honest. <laughs> He's doing all right, Ronnie. All right, so obviously a big part of coaching is that roster building. So I just want you to have a think about some of the players in the game right now. It's almost like a little bit of a dream team we're going to put together here. Nothing, nothing too complicated. We just want, to, just want to get your thoughts around some of the, the players and positions in the game at the moment. So here's how it's going yeah. to work. I want you to imagine you've got, you've got six spots in your roster that are up for grabs. Okay, now... Chris, Chris and Chris had a little bit easier. They only had to pick three each. You're doing a tough carry here, Josh. You're going to handle the whole set of six, okay? So um, yeah, okay. I've got confidence in you, mate. So what you yeah, have to think you. about, you're going to pick a – I'm going to tell you a position. And you, you kind of get to pick – salary cap's not an issue, right? Salary cap's not an issue, which is helpful. You can pick kind of mm-hmm. whatever player you want to play one game, all right? So don't worry about if they're old. Don't worry about if they're injured. You only need them to play one game, okay? You can pick kind of any anyone in you want. And – and mate, you can you can kind of pick anyone you need to. You just can't pick yourself, right? You're the coach. So oh, oh, shit. You're the okay. Coach, mate. You're the coach. Well, there goes me first. There goes my first answer. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what I want you to have a think about, what I want you to have a think about, is this too. You can only pick one player from a single club, so you can't go doubling down okay. and trying to take everyone oh, yeah, to Melbourne or all your Tigers teammates. You know, you, you've got to spread around. You know, got to spread the cap around. So, mm-hmm. first and foremost. Fullback. That's a that's a tough position at the moment. There's there's a you know, there's quality fullbacks right across the game. If you're a coach, who's the fullback you're looking to to sign up to your club right now? For me, I know that's probably probably the uh, I think a few of the you know top ten players in the world. There's probably you know three or four of them in that in that position. 
and it is a hard one. But I'm gonna have to go with uh, Turbo, Tommy the Trevojevic. Yeah, I, I, I've never seen him play a bad game. To be honest, I think um, I, I think it was last week or the last game. I mean, he saved about six tries. Mm. He's, uh, I think he's got everything as a fullback. You know, he's got the carry back. He plays the three on twos well. He seems like he's a good guy. If I was a coach, I'd definitely want to have good people around the club as well. And he seems him and his brother seem like really you know, good people as well. So I know it's uh, probably you know one people would be you know, a bit shocked because you've got Teddy and you know. Um, Ponga and whatsoever, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Turbo. Yeah, not like, and he's a New South Wales state of origin player. It's not not a bad shout. That's not a bad start there, Josh. I like that. All right, so we'll open it up now. You can take any outside back. So you can take a winger or a centre. I'll give you any any outside back. You just can't take a manly player because you got Turbo. Okay, okay. Uh, any outside back. Uh, if this is a, this is the tough one. There's a, there's a lot to choose off here. Who are yeah. you scared of? Um, you can't take George. <laughs> Defoe, he's out. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That he he definitely be out there. Um, I'm just trying to think who's who's got it got it all. You know what? Uh, I'll go with our mate David Nuffaluma at Ooh, the moment. Nuffa. Why is yeah, he he's, uh, so tough? Oh, mate, he just there's something about him, you know. He's, He's that hard to tackle, obviously, because I get to see him every day at training and I have to tackle him sometimes, which which sucks. But um, <laughs> it's just the way he gets across the field, you know, and, you know, he, he, he brought into his game, although he only played a couple, but he's with him getting this year. Um, with his other wingers and, and, and fullback and stuff, which is only going to make him better. And he's just so strong. Like, there's never a time where you get put on his back. Like, I remember playing against him when we played for the Bulldogs and, like, he just was like, if you... You know, win your set early, like one and two with with Nufa. It, it's a you know big way in winning the game. So he um, that first game he played was he was pretty much unstoppable, and you now the same thing. I think he's you know still got a fair bit to uh, go in his career. So yeah, on his day he's unstoppable. It's great to have that one. All right, now we're building a fair side here. We need it. We need a playmaker. So we need a half or a five eighth. Now you, obviously, as a position, you, you play a fair bit yourself. You. You probably looked to a lot of guys in this position. Who who are you taking right now for one game? Well, I'd say Luke Brooks, but he's got a calf injury, so we can't take him right now. And you can't take a Tigers player because you've already got Noffa. So now this is the this oh, is where yeah, it starts yeah, to get yeah. tough, Josh. You, you I'm start, breaking the rules. Yeah. Breaking the rules. Yeah, you just gotta. Uh, okay, let me. Who's got it all? Uh, do you want a game manager? Do you want someone that can break it yeah. open? You know, this is... I suppose, yeah, yeah. Someone who's gotten off. Uh, I've got two boys that you can play. Um, I'm going to go um, one of my old friends in uh, Mitchell Pierce. Ooh. I, um, yeah, I think he's one of the best um, organisers in the game. But he's also got a great running game, great kicking game. You know, he's, he's obviously not afraid to take the line on. He's, got, he's good in, in defence. And, you know, I think he's become a leader, you know, since he's gone up to Newcastle. He's obviously had to, you know, lead from the front every game. And, you know, I think he's doing a really good job. I think he's been one of the most scrutinised guys in New South Wales history. And I don't understand why when he's going up against, I suppose, the best team ever put together, Nelly, in, in that Queensland team. So, yeah, I'll, I'll throw him in as a um, halfback. Mm, definitely. Great shout there. All right, now we're getting a bit of a side here. Now we need we need a bit of muscle up front. So I need a back rower. Now this is probably an easy one to think about. Who do you not want to run at you as a five eighth? Who's who do you not want running at you? I'll tell you one bloke who I do not want tackling me, and that's Tarek Sims again <laughs> for the thirty seventh time in one game. So he can he's out of the team for that actually. He can, oh. <laughs> yeah, you don't don't, wanna, don't, don't piss off the coach. That. Don't piss off the coach. <laughs> Now I'm going to throw in a back row. I'm going to throw in Wade Graham because uh, I know. So I've got a half back in Mitchell Pierce who can organise everything, but then I've got Wade Graham who's a a back a tough back row to tackle, and he can ball play a bit. So look at this, thinking like a there, coach, can, can thinking like a coach, do a bit now. of both. Yeah, and he's made his obviously we know what he can do in defence, and he's another leader too. So yeah, I'm I'm very happy with that selection. 
All right, so we've got Trevojevic from Manly. We've got David Nofaluma, obviously, from West Tigers. We've got Mitchell Pearce from the Knights, Wade Graham from the Sharks. Two spots to go. We need a front rower and we need a hooker. Who's, who's your front rower? We probably want some metres here. You know, I'll open it up. You can have a lock yeah. as well there. Front row lock, you know, kind of. Same okay. Thing. But I'll go, we'll open that up. I'll go for my lock. I'll go Tao Malolo, obviously, because he's just unstoppable. And he's getting better, too. It's just scary. Yeah. It's, it's actually not. It's unfair what he does to people. It's actually unfair. Like, you know what? Like, during preseason training, I think about people and the games that I do, really just don't want to be a part of, and he was one of them. Like, yeah, I right. similarly done to the Bulldogs that night, and, you know, if I was a hooker in that game, I don't know if I, yeah, I don't know what I'd do. But anyway, that's, that's, another, <laughs> that's another point. <laughs> um, and in my front row, I'm going to go. So we've got the Brunt up front, you know, Tao Malolo, and we've got Wade Graham. Who so can who's you know, take an uh, tough carry? Who's your hooker? Oh, I need a hooker. You need a hooker. You need a hooker. That's your last one. You've got okay. you got your front rower, and now I just need a hooker. I oh, hold a... on. You just said I need a. You said a lock. Oh, I was going to open that front row lock. I was opening up. That is the same. Oh, okay. Can I have a special? Can I throw in a special mention? Who just you, missed the team? You definitely uh, like a. You know, he's right on eighteen. Yeah, minutes, like right a, on the cusp. Like yeah. a shadow, like a shadow player, yeah. yeah like uh, Alex Twal. I was gonna put him. I was gonna put him in for our hard worker because I think Alex he need a hard Twal. worker in the team. And he's yeah, good. I think big minutes. Yeah, yeah. and he's nice. weird. And he's weird as he's so yeah, right. weird too. Like I like, I like a weirdo in the team. Yeah, right. What do I want to know? Yeah. What makes him weird? Have we got, have we got enough time for that? Or uh, well, we're how long are we in isolation for? <laughs> <Some fun>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Nah, but honestly, he made it. Yeah, if I got to pick a front row at the moment, I love him. I love playing with him, mate. He made sixty tackles against the Knights, which is pretty unbelievable. That's what like you know Origin players and stuff do. So mate, he's um without yeah, missing, he's turn without missing as well. Didn't yeah, miss. unbelievable. All right, so who's your hooker? Right, last, one, last one in the team, number nine. Who's you know your? What? It was close. I was actually going to throw Billy Walters in, but he's a Queenslander, so see you, Billy. Yep. Um. But mate, I think you got a fair few to choose from here. You, you know, there's some, there's some big ones out there. Steve. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You know what? I, I I think we've got plenty. You know, I think everyone's gonna obviously think of the number one hooker in the world, who's Cameron Smith. But I think we've got enough leadership in our team. You know, so I'm gonna go someone different. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw. Um, you know, I'm gonna throw Happy Coruscant. Happy Coruscant. Moving yeah, I think he's um, um unbelievable at the moment. Yeah, um, right. Two games I've seen him play, he pretty much won the game for Penrith mm. between him and Cleary by himself, mate. So, and I've I've actually played against him a fair bit, and you know, going into hooking, perception and whatsoever, I think he's honestly the best in the in the game. So there you go. There's my pick. A lot of X factors in that side, Josh. I quite like it there. I quite like it. So mm. we'll have to run your team, your dream team, up against the others. But I think um. Mate, that's a fair shout. I think there's a fair shout on their day. On their day, that's a, that's a fairly good side, man. I think you've done well as a coach. I think we'll win the comp uh, yeah, mate. first year. So first year, right? Yeah. Well, that's the bar you want to set as a coach, I guess. So, <laughs> all right, one more one more segment to come just after this. It's called "Do You Remember?" We'll see just how well Josh can relive some famous moments from his career. And that's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. You're listening to the Beyond the 80 podcast sponsored by Neds. Now, it's time to put Josh Reynolds' memory to the test, mate. We've got Origins, we've got Grand Finals, Club de Boos. You know, there's plenty of big memories here. I just want to know, how do you think your memory is? You know, like, are you one of those guys that remembers certain things about games or...? Mate, I'm not even going to lie to you. Because, and I'll throw it out there because I don't want to look like an idiot. I think I have the worst memory in the world. Right, Moses okay. is here... He'd tell you what my nickname is. It's the goldfish. Oh, well, actually, the, the goldfish. It's really the goldfish. Yeah. Well, he calls me that because I just hope like he'll, he'll tell me he'll tell me something an hour before or something really important, and I'll honestly forget it and just leave leave training and stuff everything up. So yeah, <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> All right. We'll see how you go. We'll what we've what we'll do is there's three questions for you, right? They they kind of they start relatively easy. And then they finish a little bit harder, all right? So let's hope we can get you on the board for one. No one's got three from three yet. So there's, I'll give you that as well. You know, there's no, there's no kind of, no one there. All right. So question one. Has anyone got 0 and 3? Uh, 
I'm not going to comment on that. We'll just wait for you to go through <laughs> first, mate, and then we'll, then we'll see. All right. An easier one to start. A bit of an unfortunate memory to relive, I'm sorry. The, the 2014 grand final. All right. Now, I just want to I'll paint the picture for you. Souths are up 6-0. You come out after mm-hmm. halftime. We'll forget what happens off the kickoff. We'll move on from that. The dogs score and level yeah. the scores at 6-all. Do you remember how you guys scored a try? I put in a grubber for T-Rex. Was it? Oh, Tony Williams. All right, let's check the audio. We'll check the audio. Oh, one from one, Josh. What a start. What a start. There you go. One from one. All yeah, right. and, and just to, just to, just to you, you had a little stab there, mate. Yeah, I did drop the ball off the kickoff. I didn't. But I did have. That, I, don't think I did have. I, I did have my shoulder popped out just to let everyone know. Because yeah, I really that moment for a very long time. You had your shoulder, you had your shoulder popped out. <laughs> well, it popped out, and then I put it back in. But then I had to put another brace on, so I had two braces on, like the the, the seatbelt braces. And so if they anyone know, knows, the ones that you can't lift your arms high. Is that what those ones yeah, are? Yeah, yeah. That was the first time I'd worn it, and I tried to lift my hands up. <laughs> I couldn't do it, oh, mate. <laughs> it wasn't fun. It wow. wasn't good at all. One from one. Great start. Moment number Thanks. two. Now, I just, you know, again, I, I did have a bit of fun trawling through some YouTube today. There's obviously a very famous clip of you having a small disagreement with a chair up at Suncorp Stadium. Do you remember that one? <laughs> do you remember, I do, that? Do you remember I do. that one? All right. Yeah. Here's, here's, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's the question. Do you remember what you actually went to the Simbin for? Um, so I remember there was a couple of repeat offense, offenses because I'd actually done a few things that game. But, but your words, your words was, not mine. Yeah, yeah, well, it was. It was. I think I actually, it was either a high tackle or, or like high tackle slash trip on Benny Barber, maybe. Oh, you're, something you're like, very, you're very like, close. You're very close. You know what? I might give you the point here. I did ask, what did you go to the bin for? You went to the bin for a high tackle. If yeah, ben, Barber go, plays it, ben Barber plays it short. Let's listen. We'll listen to the audio here. Oh, there's a high tackle. And I think it might be the same player, Josh Reynolds, it is. He's in the bin for 10. Oh. Little short ball to Matt Gillette. I'll give, I'll give you that one, Josh. Little short ball to Matt yeah, Gillette. Yeah, thank you. Close to the it, um, the harsh one, that one. Yeah, mate, I don't know. They, you know what? I didn't, I didn't deserve it. It was, it was as Queensland as again treated me like absolute garbage. And I've never, ever been booed, sworn at, whatever happened from that walk because it was at one end of Suncorp all the way to the other. Oh, that's was, right. So, yeah, great... cause, well, I guess for those that haven't been to Suncorp, that's in that kind of far left corner and the away sheds mm-hmm. are down the bottom right. Yeah. And, really, and you had to walk right. past their bench as well and... She's wow. a big walk. She's That's a long it. walk of uh, people say shame, but deep down I loved it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now you're two from two here. Oh, they were, you know, we're a little bit. We, we give you gave you a little bit on that one. You know, like I think maybe half a point if you. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, two from two. We'll call it now. Okay. Last one to finish. Now I told you they were going to get harder as we go along. This is the last question here. You scored forty four tries in your career. Okay, just trust me. That's true. Forty one for the dogs. Mm-hmm. Three for West Tigers, all right? Mm-hmm. Can you tell me what those three tries were? So you scored From three Tigers? tries for West Tigers. Yeah. What are the three tries you've scored for West Tigers? So I scored uh, I scored previous uh, last week against the Knights. Okay. So that's your most I recent scored, one. That's, that's easy. We'll pick we'll yep. that one off. That's one. And then I scored at Leichhardt Oval against the Titans. Yeah. I like that. One of the great tries, that one. That was a, that was a fairly good effort. 70 one. metres or something. Yeah, anyway, just, yeah. To, just to recap that one. Yeah, I think, um, it, I think it's 60, but we will say it's 70. That's fine, yep. <laughs> I think it was 80, actually. But anyway. <laughs> uh, and then, mate, oh, this is a hard one. But I, I think, I think I may have scored one at the SFS against the Roosters. All right, we'll check the audio. This is, this is the last one I've check got. Check the audio. Are you two from two, and this is the last try. That was, that was Randall. Yeah, Randall's goes from dummy half. He might have got there, Josh. Unless you... Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Roosters. The Roosters, that's a, that's a good memory. Good memory there. Josh, what are you worried yeah. about? Yeah, mate, I, I, I doubt myself. What are you worried about? I mean, we might have taken a little yeah, bit I call that. I call that a Greenacre try. That one, actually, all my mates. Yeah. It's, yeah, because we used to play a team called Greenacre Grasshoppers and 
pretty much the only way that they could score tries was one metre away from the line from hooker and barge over. So if you make the listeners, they'd know what a good old trust try is. A green acre try. All right. Well, you know, they all yeah. count the same, mate. They all count the same. Yeah, they all do. They all do. Yeah, for sure. Well, Josh, thank you for your time today. I uh, really appreciate you jumping on. What's, uh, what's next in the isolation training for you? What's on the schedule for tomorrow? Mate, I'm actually about to go after this. Uh, just to, I'll do some weights. Might give Ronnie, Ronnie Palmer, the Cougar, a call just to give a little prep talk and then, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Mate, fantastic. Thank you for your time today, mate. Really appreciate you jumping on. Thanks, boys. Thanks Thank- for having me. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening today. Thanks to Josh. Thank you for Ned's for your support and everyone for tuning in. We'll be back with episode three next week, and we'll catch you next time on the Beyond the 80 podcast.